Hi everybody, in this video, I will discuss in-app authentication. As you know, you may desire to authenticate when opening your device. There are several ways to do it. You can have a code that can be either long, six digits, or short, four digits, or even alphanumeric. And you also have biometrics capabilities. So far, when I'm recording this video, only Touch ID scanner of fingerprints is available, but we are hardly believing that sooner or later, you will also benefit from face recognition. Okay, that are the rumors when I'm recording this video in August 2017. These biometric capabilities, so far Touch ID, are available since the iPhone 5S. And it's reasonably safe. It's not 100% safe because somebody, at least for Touch ID, uh, showed that uh, you could uh, use uh, silicone uh, copy of a given fingerprint. Uh, but in many situations, it's okay. Uh, the idea is to introduce that in your app. So you imagine that you have an application running, uh, you are doing some stuff, and one of these operations is a little bit touchy. So you want to validate this transaction when the application is already opened, and so when, apparently, the code already has been entered. So the idea is to allow in-app authentication. In fact, uh, everything seems to be located in a class called LA context, LA for local authentication. There are also some types that are provided. LA policy, you have so far two policies. Authentication, that includes authentication with a code and biometrics authentication, and here, biometrics only. Maybe if there are several ways of doing it in a, with biometrics, uh, you will have the opportunity to select just one or the other. But at this stage, we don't know. And also you have a LA error that uh, allows to describe a problem that occurred when doing the authentication. So how you process? First, you select a policy. And you can check for the capability of the terminal to handle this policy. And this is not only true for biometrics, as I write here, because if you have deactivated authentication in your terminal, then even the traditional authentication will fail, because it's not possible, it's not available, the terminal has been open to everybody. And then you ask for an authentication, okay, so uh, you have a primitive, this is the objective C, and even uh, here also, and the uh, Swift code as usual. Okay, and you get a reply, and the reply is performed as it's done more and more often in iOS, through a handler. And the handler has a prototype, it has a boolean that states if it was successful or not, and if it's not successful, you can get and information about why it failed, and you can check for this, okay? And you have the prototype in Swift 2. Of course, this does not work on the simulator. So, uh, if you want to check these capabilities, you really have to go through a real physical device. Is it safe? Here, I won't uh, discuss the safety of the process in terms of uh, how somebody can get into your terminal, I will mention the fact that the information, such as the fingerprints, maybe later your faces, uh, and the code, uh, are stored. They are stored in a confined area in uh, the device. And it's quite difficult, apparently, to get in. In fact, the information doesn't get out from the device. And you may have heard about uh, the difficulties that the FBI had to get into uh, some uh, devices in some uh, affairs. Okay? It is really uh, difficult. So it's not impossible, but it's difficult. Some concluding remarks, it's quite useful as a mechanism to prevent dangerous actions to be performed by 
somebody else and the person you want to perform uh, the operation. Okay, so it grants you that the owner of the phone is there and of course it only works if the application is in foreground. Okay, there is another alternative uh, that is called Keychain, but it's quite a pain too uh, and uh, I will not discuss this. And in fact it's a way to behave like Apple Pay does because Apple Pay uses such facilities when you pay some service with your iPhone. And uh, of course uh, you may also directly access to Apple Pay. Uh, I will not discuss that but if you have a look in the Apple documentation about PKP token you will get the information on how to uh, use Apple Pay directly in your application if you need so. Thank you for your attention. See you later. Thank you.